One hot summer's day, it came out of blue, followed by flies and covered in goo. Ma screamed and Pa hit it hard with a shovel, and all the thing did was blow a big putrid bubble. As Dad slowed his hitting and Ma ran for the shed, that's when I noticed it was missing its head. It was a bit gruesome, all agreed, for it had no head to pet and still had fleas. It had no eyes, but it could see. It had no mouth, but it could feed. It must have used his butt to breathe. It wandered here and there around the farm and was often difficult to find. But it was my new best friend, so I didn't mind. Was it a dog? Was it once a cat? Was it a possum crossed with a rat? Nobody knew, and nobody cared. No one else would pet it. Nobody dared. It ran, it played, it dug up old graves. The thing with no head, it rarely behaved. Many neighbors and relatives wanted it dead. But by now, it slept soundly at the foot of my bed. A year later, when it finally twitched to a stop, I was the only one who cared. Ma just handed me a mop. Dad dug a hole as deep as he could. He threw the carcass in like a chunk of firewood. I dressed as a preacher and said some sweet last words while Mother was busy in the yard, still cleaning up turds. Well, it caused a lot of trouble and was usually naughty. I prayed that God might find a head to stick on its body. And the only words my pa said as we stood in the rain, besides the usual cussing and taking the Lord's name in vain, was that the thing we were burying, the thing with no head, it was obviously much, much better off being gosh darn stinking finally dead.